just so we're all clear, we're not going to be covering uh, Git today. So not the terminal. That's a separate training. Uh, how many of you guys have used Git before the terminal? A lot of you guys. So any one of you guys could have done this talk instead of me. That's one. <laughs> okay. Uh, again, what what about GitHub, the actual uh, dashboard? I saw a few hands go up. So less people. Yeah. Okay. Cool. What, like the desktop app? Yeah, like 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 this. This. Wait, are you talking about the website or are you talking about so the desktop app? How many of you guys have actually used the GitHub website? Well, the website. Yeah. The website. Okay. What about the uh, what's it called? The GitHub yes. desktop? Yeah, I've tried it, but I don't know the terminal. Yeah, yeah. For some things, it's, it's it's a lot easier. Yeah. Um. Funny enough, I was talking to someone at Esri, and I was asking them, "So, what do you use? Do you use a terminal or do you use like a UI?" And I was expecting them to tell me the, the terminal, right? And they're like, "No, we use the the UI." And I'm like, I was surprised. Yeah. Um, but there are programs that make. For example, viewing the different trees and how you're diverging from branches much easier. Uh, you can do it in the terminal, uh, but it's not as, I guess, as pretty. I guess um, once it gets more complex, right? Right. right. Yeah. So I know there is one called Git Kraken or whatever it's called, but it has a really pretty interface. Uh, and I know if you're a student, uh, how many of you guys know that if you're a student, you can get a, a Git student uh, pack? It's two years, and they give you a bunch of free stuff. So if you have a student email, you can apply for it, and normally within a couple of hours they give you approval. So yeah, I'll put that link on there later. Unless anyone else has it, you can put it on Slack. I've also used Bitbucket. Bitbucket? Uh, I do most of my work on the command line, and I just push it up to Bitbucket when I'm done. Command line, like, like, like you should, right? Okay, perfect. Yeah, I'm talking all this mess like I'm really good at it, but. So, okay, how many of you guys have a GitHub profile? Everyone, perfect. Let's not focus on the picture. Um, so, how many of you guys know what this is for? And again, let's not focus on how not green it is. Okay. <laughs> Track what you've done. Right. <laughs> yeah, so it, it pretty much tracks what you've done. A lot of developers get really hanged up on trying to keep it green all the time. Uh, just keep in mind there is a whole concept of quality over quantity, right? Um, whenever you are making commits in your program, uh, make sure that all your commits have a proper message, not just for the purpose of having a message, right? If you think about it, when you go back and look at your commits, um, when you've made a change in, in your program, the reason you're, you're putting a message is not for the rest of the world, it's for you, you're keeping track of every version of your, your program. Right? So don't defeat the purpose by just putting a random message in there. Right? Don't put, I updated the app. Right? Put what you did. Right? Okay, now the cool thing about this component right here is that if you hover over it, I don't know if you guys can see that far, but it tells you how many contributions you made. Now, contributions, you can see the, the different um, uh, sections that count as contributions, right? So commit code reviews, issues, and then pull requests, right? So do you guys know what issues are on GitHub? Okay, so if you see up here, let's open the repository. Uh, let's open this one. What one Louder? Okay, I'll, I'll probably go louder. Uh, yeah, so it's a project I have, and we'll go over all the different tabs at the top. And then again, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. Okay. Louder, Jim? I can't do louder. Okay. Okay. We're in main, right? I'm sorry? We're in main, right? Yeah, you can look at any repository. They should all look similar. So, the majority of the time, you'll be browsing through different repositories, and you'll be clicking on their, their main page, right? So, the code page. So, when you go through these, you have what is called the description for the actual repository, right? Most of the time it'll have like the URL so you can visit the actual page if they have like a GitHub uh, page or a URL, uh, URL live on the internet. Um, then you have all these little items here. They have commits. If you click on commits, it'll give you a whole history of all the commits for that project. 
It's very useful if you want to have a high level overview of all the commits. Where is that? Oh, that's right here. So if you click on this, you can see all the different commits. The message and when it was done, right? Now let's not read my commits, right? They're not very useful. Okay. So do we understand what this link is for? The commit? Just the history, right? Branches? How many of you guys know what branches are? No, so there's a difference between a fork and clone, right? And we'll go over that. Wait, so okay. So what's the difference between forks and cloning and branch? Okay, so someone's coming. So when you do a, a fork for a project, you are copying that project, the whole project, mm -hmm. over to your account. Right? And you're you're severing a file. Right? You're severing. You're severing. So Whatever change you make to this to this uh, this port is yours. So it's a separate project. Yes, you're building on top of it, right? When you're cloning, yeah, yeah you can sever the, the tie, but the, the purpose of it is different, right? How many of you guys have cloned a project? Okay. So whenever you want to, the easiest way I think, whenever you want to contribute to a project, you do a port, right? You do your changes and everything, and then you create a PR report. Okay. Yeah. So we'll we'll try to cover all of those. Okay. So a fork is if you're going to continue working on the project with the original team, and a clone is if you just want your own separate project. Yeah. Okay. And we can try doing both, so I can show you what they look like. Um, <coughs> I just don't know if we should focus on that when we do the uh, get training. So I can show you on the on the terminal. Cloning doesn't matter because it's like your own. You might as well have your own repository. It's not like there's well, I don't know. I, I tend to clone a lot rather than forking. And um, then merge later? Or? No, I think it's more because I, I need specific components from that project. I don't need the whole thing. So but you're not working on that project. Right, I'm not working on the you're project. You're just getting something getting from it that you're going to yeah. use. But it's saying cloning is not when you're going to be working on the project with the team. You can if you're a contributor, right? So, so for example, for IFC, we do have a, a repository called main. So it's for the, for the main website, right? And I've added a lot of you guys as contributors. So you can clone and you can push directly, right? So when you clone your own repository, yes, you can push. But if you, if you fork, you can't push directly to that remote repository. Does that make sense? Okay, so once you fork, it is a separate thing. Entirely. Right, now it's on your account, right? Not you not can either. push to, to that one, but if you but clone... But it means ours, not, not yes. you can't able to take it back. Right. So if I try, for example, cloning a project from Microsoft, I create a branch, and then I try pushing to that branch. It's going to say, no, permission denied. Right? Does that make sense? Okay. So what, so what we clone, you have to clone then, and then you request for permission to... Right. So if you're going to contribute, it'd be easier if you fork over to your, your, your account. You do all your changes. You create a branch, work on a feature, and then you do a PR request. So you're requesting that they pull that... Okay. So it's not, it's not permanently. You see how they have, if we go back, that's a lot of commits, right? 52,000 commits, um, 330 branches. So if we go in there, we can filter all the branches. This, uh, the overview, just like it said, it gives you an overview of all the branches, right? So, so what are the branches? What does it mean? So, okay, so you have master, which is the main version of your program, right? 
when you branch, you're creating a copy of that project and you're naming it something else, right? So most of the time you'll, you'll do something like, you're working on a feature, let's say you're adding navigation to your, to, uh, to your application, right? So you create an app, let's say you call it feature forward slash navigation, right? You work on that branch, do all your changes, and then you push it up. So now you have two branches. You have master, and then feature forward slash navigation, right? Now, do you understand why you do that? This way you can save the original version. In case you messed up and you break something, you can always go back to the original version, right? So is a branch sequential, or can you have multiple branches at the same time? You can have there multiple can be branches. multiple. Yeah. And do they ever get all back incorporated into the main That's project? That's up to the project manager to yeah. merge them in. Yeah. When you try to merge, uh, sometimes depending on the changes and where you make changes, you might have what are called uh, merge conflicts. And GitHub will do one of two things. It will either tell you you can't fix this on github.com, and it'll tell you to do it on the terminal. So you'll clone the repository. It's so nice that it gives you the actual instructions, right? It'll tell you what to do. And then once you're on your, let's say, VS Code or whatever editor you use, it'll show you where those conflicts are. You need to fix them manually, okay? That's one. The second way is on github.com, it'll open up, um, what is it called? It's like an editor. Right? But it'll show every single merge conflict. So these are more uh, simpler conflicts that you have that you can resolve on github.com. And as soon as you're done, you can say uh, conflict resolved, and it'll go jump to the next file until you've resolved them all. Right? Once you re resolve all conflicts, then you can merge your PR request. Okay? Any questions about that? So did, did you understand what branch are called? Yes. Okay. So here, they have so many. Um, normally what we do uh, at work is we look at the ones that are stale when, we're, when it's time to clean up the repository and we see which ones we don't need, right? And if it's something we already worked on or it's already been there, we're no longer going to work on, we delete that branch, okay? You can see here that it's labeled closed. They have one that is merged. So it's at their discretion. Whoever's managing the repository, I've heard, I've heard them being called git masters or, or whatnot, but they take care of the repository and they decide when to remove it, right? Uh, the problem with having too many cooks in the kitchen is that if you have too many people, you know, managing the repository, you're bound to break something, right? So you need to be communicating constantly. So, yeah. We've done that before and it's not, it doesn't work. How many of you guys have seen uh, releases for, for, for projects? Okay, so I find it to, to be a nice way to organize uh, big chunks of features that you're doing for, for an application. It also allows you to add squad here. It also allows you to add a whole, uh, like it's downloadable for the project. So. Again, who's used uh, releases before? Oh, all of a sudden, nobody's used it. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. Good job, because I was going to call on you. Okay. Any questions about re the, uh, releases? No? Maybe? What would be? Oh. Are they just equivalent to versions? Sorry? Are they equivalent to versions? Yeah. Yeah. At least that's how we use them. So I saw another hand go up. Yeah, it's kind of a similar question. Okay. For like what? what like yeah. Is it like a version or? Um, yeah. So you can have like multiple releases yeah. of things. Now, it, it, from what we've done at work, uh, I don't want to say it's best practice, but what we do is we kind of list out what features we're releasing with that release, okay. so that we can go back and say, okay, well, this is when we release uh, release this. Uh, and this is when our stuff broke, so let's look here, right? Gotcha. So. It, it, would you also use it for, um, say you have like software that only works on certain, uh, you know, certain operating systems or certain, like, like a certain number of operating systems? I can systems. see it uh, be very helpful when you reach, like for example, I, I've had this problem where uh, on my application, this specific piece of code works on version one point whatever, 
right? So I can go back and download that version of the application. Yeah. So yeah, so it, it would be helpful for that. Gotcha. So, so thank you for those questions. Those are good. Any other questions? I'm gonna see a lot of uh, leaks on your guys' repository. contributors, right? So if you click here, they have a lot of contributors. Um, ours does not have that many. So we have four contributors. And so we go back to the development. I'm a contributor to my school gathering my strength. Okay, we'll go back here. So contributors mean if you're working on that project, you push code to that specific branch. When you change branches, sometimes the numbers uh, the numbers change, right? So how many of you guys have contributed to a repository that isn't specifically yours? Okay, let me ask that question again. How many of you guys have contributed to projects that are not yours? Oh my god, no? Okay, so I know what we're gonna talk about. I think for a lot of us that don't use Git a lot, it's mm -hmm. basically, a cloud storage drive with a little bit of extra interface. I love that. That's, 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 yeah. There's no other that's crazy. Yeah. So you yeah. know what? I'm, over here. I'm, I'm not going to give you yeah. grief over that because that's exactly the way I saw it before I started working with a team. Um, you don't you don't justify learning it when you're by yourself when you're only going to control. It's not that you don't justify it. It's how do you learn it if you're the only one using it? You can learn it. I just kind of justify it's, it. It's like, not, you're yeah. learning it, but it's not learning it the way it's meant to be used. It's all artificial. Yeah, see, I, I'm, I'm going to have you guys work on projects just for the purpose of learning it. Thank you. So, um, at some point, one of these Saturdays, we're going to do something about free and open uh, source software. Uh, I want you guys to start participating, contributing to different uh, applications, right? I think that's one of the most exciting things about software. You guys can start contributing to, say, Microsoft, right? Literally, guys, some of these things are, are just typos, right? You can go, contribute, fix the typo, all of a sudden you have the badge that says Microsoft on your profile, right? And it starts just with little typos. So it, it doesn't have to be anything complicated, okay? As time passes by, there's different features that come out that you can contribute to. Uh, things that you might learn, eventually learn, and start contributing. So again, if you guys also want to start before then and you need help in finding the project, let me know. Uh, I would say let's get you guys all on, on Mozilla, but they're not using GitHub for the stuff that I'm working on. Uh, they're using Mercurial, and I wouldn't do that to you guys. Mercurial is not very friendly, in my opinion. Do they do they get uh, Mercurial? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and we're using Fabricator and then Arcanist as well. Would you say embedded? Uh, in the beginning, very much so. So, yeah. But, I mean, again, it's a tool, right? Uh, it's a tool with something you can learn. Uh, and the whole purpose is to get work done. So, yeah, so we need to get you guys to the beginning. So, let's go back. I want to show you the purpose of contributors or how to manage contributors. So for example, we we have all these uh, collaborators on our repository. Okay. On a normal profile, you guys can have private repositories, public repositories. <coughs> now that uh, GitHub was acquired by Microsoft, you guys can have unlimited private repositories. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, the only thing that they didn't remove as far as limitations is that you can only still have three people as collaborators on a private repository, right? Without paying. Without paying, yeah. And when you pay, I think every single person has to pay. So. Like how much? 
I don't know, I think it's like 9 to 15? Per 9 to 15 per person? Yeah. Per month? Per month, yeah. You can, you can get the price of this blog for the price of rent. Let's look at the actual thing. $9 per month. And then unlimited collaborator. So I'll find some stuff. Okay. Now the cool thing about the account we have is that we can have unlimited everything. Right? So if you guys want to open a repository, you can open it there. Have unlimited um, collaborators and it's private. And like I said before, you guys put your own license there, anything you build, that's yours. Okay? I am not making any money off of any of you guys here. So the whole purpose of this account is for you guys to utilize, right? Same as the IESD account, yeah. your account. The IES, no, not my account. <laughs> <laughs> no, that when you put something on there, yeah, we're both gonna come up. So, yeah, um, yeah, the ISD account that's for you guys to use, right? Uh, all you guys have to tell me is, hey, I'm gonna make this repository, and then we open it, and then you guys can start assigning collaborators. Okay, so you guys understand that? Okay, perfect. Again. Unless you don't, uh, unless you tell me it's not gonna happen. So, yeah, cool. Now, the cool thing about this uh, page right here is you can modify the access that that collaborator gets for that repository. And the cool thing, well, there's a lot of cool things. They've added different levels of uh, permission, right? You can come in here and it even tells you uh, with detail how much access you can give that person. So, uh, read access, uh, triage, write, maintain, and admin, right? Uh, you don't want to give everyone admin access to your repository. Do I have to explain why? <laughs> okay, perfect. Cool. Now, just because I'm on the topic of collaborators, I want to show you guys one more thing. Again, because it's, it's a tool you guys have, and I feel it's very underused. Um, so this is the repository for ISD, right? If you go under people, and you don't see your name, let us know and we'll add you there. Well, you'll get an invitation, you accept it, and then you're part of the organization there, right? Now, once you start contributing and everything, you have the option to set your, I guess, affiliation to public. And once you do, it'll show up Is there a way to request that through the app where you can just flash your name? Yeah, just put on flash and say, hey, can you guys add me? Or yeah. It, it shows up right here. Right? Now, remember how I said if you are contributing to a project, let's say uh, you were fixing a typo or, or anything, right? You can also contribute to a project by opening issues. Right? You go to a project, you open it up, and then all of a sudden you find mistakes on it or a typo and you don't want to fix it, but you open up an issue, okay? That counts as a contribution, okay? I'm not saying go to Microsoft and open 100 different issues for the same thing, but what I'm saying is that even that counts as a contribution, and that gets to like these badges over here, okay? Um, I think I posted something on the Firefox Dev Tools, one of these uh, applications that they have on GitHub, like one of the only ones they have on GitHub, and all of a sudden I, I got the badge, right? Uh, it's better if you're actually part of the organization and you have it on the left side, but it's better than not having it, right? So. so again, you'll, um, if you join the organization and you want to show it on your uh, profile, you come to this page and you click on here, and you uh, put this from private to public. Now, do you have any questions about collaborators? Okay. So again, collaborators are people that you're adding to your repository. Okay? You're giving them access, and you control that access. They can either read, they can either uh, modify your repository. Uh, if they're admins, they can do more than modify your repository. They can make uh, admin level changes to that repository. Okay? So you have to be careful. Um, if you're working on a project with a team, Say for example, um, Andy, David, and Tony. Um, you guys have added each other as collaborators to that repository, right? Yes. Yeah, okay, awesome, perfect. 
Okay? So they're able to push directly to that repository. They're able to make branches and everything. They don't have to fork that repository. Okay? All they do is clone it, they get all the branches, they switch over to a different branch, they work on the feature, or they branch off of master or whatever workflow they have. Okay? Again, I'm not expecting you guys to memorize all of this at all. Right? So you guys do have a Slack channel and I'm hoping you guys can tell me what it looked like on Slack, right? And ask me a question or Vast. Vast is always popping on here. So. so how do you stop following a repository or leave a repository or whatever? Leave a repository? Did you start it? Okay, I, when I was mm -hmm. taking C++ classes at RCC and okay. I went by the computer lab, and one of the guys there added me to one of his repositories that was for the, the ACM, the program competition. Um, but then he left the school and he graduated and he's done. Mm -hmm. and it, but it shows up in my repository and I never put it there. On the door repository? Well, on my home page, on my profile, on GitHub. Mm -hmm. I'll have to take a look at that. And I have no idea. It's a private repository, and I don't—I never put it there. I don't know how it got there. I want to say you would go under settings and then go into collaborators. For my my profile. For that repository where you have access. So you're saying you have access to that repository, right? Your collaborator. I have no idea. It's listed under repository. Yeah. So try going under settings and then find collaborator, and you should find yourself there. Yeah. I'm find anything that's broken with a repository of uh, the project, um, or there's a feature that you want to add, or a suggestion for something, that can all go under issues, right? In the context of someone else's uh, repository. Uh, for your repository, uh, any uh, enhancement you want to work on, any bugs that you want to file, that goes under issues, okay? This really uh, neat uh, feature right here, uh, label, okay? Very useful for organizing. Okay. Uh, you guys will learn once we have that talk about free and open source software. You guys will see that you can filter issues uh, on GitHub by a label called uh, Good First Issue or, or Help Wanted. And those are um, issues that you can work on. Okay? So, so for example, on the uh, main repository that we have for ISD, for the website, we have labels like en Enhancement. Yeah. Sorry, I, miss, I might have missed it here, but the labels are for what exactly? Organization. Right? So when I look at all these issues, and I'm saying, uh, let's filter by enhancement. I click on enhancement. Okay. Now I only see enhancement. Right? So that's, that's very useful. Let's say I want to look at only good first issues. I click on that, and only good first issues. Right? So these are issues that any person new to uh, GitHub can work on, or they're meant for beginners to work on. But they only apply to issues. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's not Saturday, guys. You guys have worked all day already. Come on. Okay. Pull request. How many of you guys have used pull request before? Can someone tell me what they think the pull request is? I want you to consider it for merging. Right? And they're going to pull that data from your repository over to theirs. Right? In the beginning, that did not make sense to me. I don't know why, but it makes sense once you think about it in that context. Does that make sense? You're asking them to fetch it. It's yeah. not that you're... And also resolve any conflict. Yeah, you don't have to do that. You're right? not asking to push it. No. You're asking them to pull. To take it from your repository, right? or the branch you've made, whatever, right? So basically when you fork it, you actually have your own repository on GitHub. Yeah. And then when you do the pull request, it's sending a message to the person who has the master repository or whatever branch you fork. Right. So it, it, it looks a bit different. Try to merge. When you do a PR request, 
from something that you port over to a remote repository. It allows you to choose the repository that you're trying to do the PR request for and the branch, and then what repository and branch yeah. you want to do the PR for, right? So I don't think I have a repository to do that with, but. So we only have one open PR. So I'm just going one done. But we can see all the flows PRs we've had. So these are for all the different components that we've added to the website, right? Yeah, a lot of these are missing labels. But yeah, but sorry, you keep throwing around the word PR. What does that mean? Uh, for request. Oh, sorry. Thank you for asking. So. So you see, we see that you want to work on is the preferred workflow to start with a branch or a port or now are you working on a different repository or uh, an ISD repository or well, well yeah so it's, well well it's, you see the ISD for example okay. and, and that's a different other way so normally when you see an issue that you want to work on you you pull something right you say hey is someone working on this can I work on this issue right. Normally what you want to do is, on the readme, look for something that says contributing or how to contribute, right? Read the instructions and see what kind of um, setup they have, right? If they require you to post before working on something, you do that. Otherwise, you work and then somebody else pushes code and they're doing that, right? So I would, yeah, I would normally do that. Look for <laughs> any instructions, yeah. So read the instructions first for whatever repository you're working on, uh, especially if it's a big repository. Uh, for us, what we normally have you do is you find an issue, you post that you're interested in it, and then you assign yourself to it, right? Because you, you have that power to do that. If you're a contributor and, and whatnot, you can assign it to yourself, and you can start working on it. Okay? So, wonderful question. So, did everyone get that? Okay. Again, please ask questions, guys, because I, I will start to ramble, and it might not have any <coughs> actual order. Okay? And if you guys see anything on here that you want to ask about that I didn't cover that, please. Like for example, what is this dismiss button? It dismisses something. Look at that. Wonderful. Yeah, I know. Okay. Who added the label to the issue? The git so, master? What yeah, what uh, the git master. Uh, in the context of ISD, for example, uh, people working on the different uh, issues, they can suggest uh, different labels. But for example, let's say we go into one of the other uh, Let me go to the issue. You're on the right side. You have all these labels, right? You can choose one of the existing labels. So we have things like approved, uh, bug, complex, documentation, and so on. Or I can create a new label. And I'll give you the Give me the option right here. Create a new label called new label, right? If I click on it, it gives me the option to give it a color, right? Mm -hmm. These options are only going to show up if you're like a managing managing person at this repository, right? If you're a uh, collaborator. Because I'm in here and I'm not seeing any of these, so I'm assuming it's because I'm. Because you're not a collaborator, okay. right? Makes sense. Because mm -hmm. imagine if, if we all had access to all of them. No, I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't because of the no, browser I'm using or something. Good question. Um, okay, so did we get the label? Okay, cool. Um, uh, 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 uh. Project. Project is like the my favorite one. We'll cover that. Uh, milestone. That I chose for organization. So, for example, um, I'll give you this example. I, I was a little bit working on this feature, and uh, my mentor was telling me, okay, for milestone one, we want you to finish uh, task one through 10, right? That's milestone one. So let's say um, in the context of this right here, we have 10 issues that we have open, right? And we say for milestone one, we want to finish these five tasks. So when we open those, those issues, we're going to assign them to that specific milestone, right? So it's for the purpose of organization. And as you're completing all these different milestones, you see this little progress bar right here? That goes up. Okay? Does that make sense? 
Where is that? That's still under... Under Ishan. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Also, if you guys have, by mistake or anything, subscribed to a specific issue and you're getting a bunch of emails every time somebody posts a message or something, you can unsubscribe. Okay? Right here. I know someone will ask that in the future. Now remember how I said you can assign yourself to these uh, issues with your collaborator? Top right corner right here, you click on it. You can assign it to people or you can assign it to yourself. So you unsubscribe it just to that issue, not to the right. entire... not the whole repository. Yeah. So you, you, you have granular control over what you're doing on the repository. How many of you guys have actually posted a comment or anything on, on GitHub as an issue or, or whatever? Okay, have you guys heard of, of Markdown before? Okay, perfect. So, you, you get somewhat, I mean, it's, it's useful. Uh, it's not that you have the power of words in here, right? But for what it is, it, it, it's useful enough, right? Uh, you can create I mean, it's right here, guys, but I don't think I have to explain this part. We have all these little tools right here, right? Uh, Markdown, let's see, you should have a little teaching. This one. Oh, there we go. There's, there's a link for you guys to learn Markdown. Okay. sharing code, you do backtick uh, three times to start. Okay, so I don't think, okay, how many of you have to post the code on Slack? No, okay, hold on. <laughs> Surprise, Slack supports markdown, okay? So let's go code, I'm gonna do shift, enter, nope, I lied. That's what I thought, but you know how you have your own preferences? Yeah, so the default should be uh, what he said, but I set mine to enter, and when you're doing code, it, sh it shouldn't submit it. I'll, I'll show you where to go. Uh, but yes, if I save this, you see how it's not normal text? It's formatted as code. Same thing on, on GitHub. You can do those kind of things there. Try to get it. So uh, I'm sorry, uh, so we, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's what? a markup language for Absolutely. mathematical text. Oh, okay. I, I, I don't know. Markup. Yeah, I don't know. I've never used it. So. Yeah. 
What is it called? It's called LaTeX. It, it looks like LaTeX, but it's not LaTeX. Okay. I mean, if it's a, uh, if it's derived from Markdown, maybe. It's no, no, it, it very, very early predates oh, Markdown. Okay. It's basically Donald Knuth's uh, markup language for typesetting mathematical textbooks, and it's evolved quite a bit. Okay. What in, in where have you seen it before? Go on the lowest key, you look at the oh, okay. very, uh, or throw open a textbook to throw it on the floor and see what pops up that block. I use it a lot for my class notes that have an awful lot of math in it. Because, for example, for readme files, you know, you're not limited to just using uh, Markdown. You can also use HTML. It's just you don't have the full power of HTML. So there's <coughs> only so much you can do with HTML. So yeah, but so I, I, I don't know if we can use that in there. So, so yeah. So we did this room. We did pull requests, right? Did we do pull requests? We talked about it. Okay. So let's try to do an any pull request, right? Click on new pull request space where we want to uh, pull the code to. Let's say dev. Branches, it'll tell you what the differences are. Here we go. So we're trying to pull the community branch into the dev branch, which is the base, uh, and it's telling me that uh, these are the changes, right? So if I create the pull request, How do you cancel your PR? Oh, here. 
the state chamber, your viewers not going to do this. So let's say you're not going to do anything, right? You're not going to do the yard, yard no more. Uh, best practice is, you know, let everyone know that you're not going to do it anymore, and then close for request, okay. right? Now, let's say you you did a fellow PR request, and first of all, let's close this from developer yet. Uh, let's look at product files. That have been done. So let's say there's a PR request that you did, and something happened, and you need to revert, right? You need to go back to the version before that PR request was done. There's this beautiful button right here called revert. Okay? Then everyone can um, get that part. So if you go into the PR that you've already merged, scroll all the way to the bottom to where you actually merged it, then it'll say revert. Okay? You click on that, and it'll revert it. So basically you're undoing the merge? Yeah, the, the merging of that PR request. And is that that's just for you, or is that global? And it's for, for that whole thing, yeah, for everyone. Yeah. So, again, you're merging this branch with the base branch that you denoted, right? Why would you revert it after it's merged to the base? Let's say, yeah, let's say it unexpectedly broke something, right? So you unmerge it, you work on it, and then you do another PI request, and you do it again, right? Any other questions about that? You guys won't believe how many times that little button came in the list. Is it also a way to revert off code, the code tab? No? I'm sorry? Is it also a way to revert, like a different tab, like the code tab, for example? If you can revert from here? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, you can revert commit, but I don't think there's a button for that on here. You do that on the terminal, right? You have these beautiful little numbers right here. And then you to identify the commit you want to revert. Okay. So for those of you guys that, I mean, how many of you guys have seen the project section of a repository? Oh, okay, that's more than what I thought. That's wonderful, okay. So, my favorite part. Yeah. That's that I, uh, I see someone disconnecting from my repository. It's kind of weird. I, I got like five repositories or something. I'm still not going to save. Right. So there's two instances, right? In a repository, you do have a project uh, tab. And this uh, project management system is for that specific repository, right? If you go to your I think you could try linking them, but we can take a look. So, but yeah, but you do have two different, uh, I would call them namespaces, but two different. Yeah, so. Okay, so let's go back to the uh, project management for the main repository, right? So how many of you guys uh, know what this is called? This, uh, this setup? How much? Okay, perfect. So. If you're adding issues to the repository, uh, you're not going to immediately work on those those items, right? So you're more than uh, you're, you're you're free to rename these as as you as you please, right? However, if you want to set up your own project management, that's up to you. But for example, the way we got it here is backlog. Any issue that's open, it goes automatically to the backlog, right? Then once somebody picks it up, it goes into committed. Once they start actually working on it, it goes into, into in progress, right? 
once they actually work on it and they're doing, say, a PR that's ready for testing, and for example, the Git master goes in, they clone that specific branch, they test it, and if it works, they merge it and they move it on to complete. Okay? Does that make sense? I think that's one of the simplest um, workflows. But again, you can have your own workflow. Okay? Uh, one really uh, interesting thing that this can do is it can do automated um, management of all these different uh, items, and you can handle it. So let's say, let me go back. You see uh, this settings icon over here? I click on it, and I can click on manage automation. Okay? And uh, I can have it trigger whenever I want it to based on what they're, the options they're giving me here, right? So for example, move issues here when newly added, right? So I have that marked. So whenever something added, whenever I add something new, it gets moved here, okay? Does that make sense? Okay. Now let's go back to closet and just read it into the closet. So I, I, I clicked on new project after I clicked on project. I go in and give it a name for that project. Description. And then it asks me for the template. Okay? And the one we're talking about was automated. Automated combat. Okay? You can also have one with reviews. Okay? You can go in and you can play with these guys. These are very useful. Okay? Uh, even if you're working on a project alone, you can you can track all your different uh, feature that you're adding to your application, okay? Especially if you want to utilize your GitHub to get a, uh, a job. I think it, it shows the employee that you're going above and beyond, right? To properly uh, manage your, your, your project. Does that make sense? Okay. I don't think learning this will hurt you or take away from what you're doing, so I think it's useful. Now, one of the things that I haven't used much uh, I don't, not that, uh, not that I don't find it useful, but I mean, I, you do everything pretty much on your, your readme, right? Uh, but you can have a, a, a wiki for every repository that you have. Okay, so you can make pages and you have a list on the right side. Here, let me show you real quick. Sorry, I've already checked on that. It might be useful, maybe, for things like, um, let's say you don't want to have, here, let me show you. For main, for the documentation, we decided to create a folder called docs. And we, we link from all over the place to those different documentation, right? So let's say I want to look at contributing. Okay, everything to contributing to that specific repository is there. But let's say I wanted everything in one place. Okay, that's what I would use Wiki for, instead of having the stock folder. Does that make sense? I would go in here and I would create a page for every single one of these items. Okay, and the cool thing is that it would be under pages. I think I just sold myself into doing that instead. So, yeah. It's nice because it's all in one place, right? If you click on it, go back and forth, it's wonderful. So, does that make sense what we use the Wiki for? Security. Um, I would say this is more of a, a newer feature. Uh, yeah, it's more of a newer feature, I would say. How many of you guys have repositories where you've had this email that says there's been like, and there's, been, there's an exploit in one of the packages that, you, that you've used? Okay? It's normally for people that are using something like React or, or Node or something, right? That Lodash needs to get their stuff together for some reason. You get these like every single week. You can switch it to where you don't get those emails, or you can switch it to where you get it every week. It compiles all those notifications and it sends them to you as a report every week. Okay? That's only visible to contributors. Collaborate, yep. Yeah. Otherwise, it's kind of a big point because people that are not collaborators would go there right. and they can exploit your system. Right. See, but it, it, it also kind of shows you that you should be careful who you're giving all this access to, right? So, 
make sure you use all the different access uh, levels and permissions. So, uh, let's see. Yeah, see, this is nice. This is, you don't have to think of I had a question about the permissions. So, uh, yeah. or celebrity. Read the, the, the alerts that you showed a moment ago. What level of, what level of, uh, Permissions? Or right. Permissions? Yeah, what, what levels must you be at to be able to see this? I want to say read. There's five different ones, right? Um, but at the moment that you become a collaborator, you have already more permission than a normal person that's not a collaborator, right? So I, I believe read would be able to see these. Again, don't call me on that one. Again, this is completely new, right? Uh, but I want to say that it's read. Any questions about this panel here? I think for now, the only reason you might see this is because you're going to go and turn it off to be able to get it in your email. So, yeah. Okay, insights. Now, in one word, I, I can tell you guys this is analytics, right, for your repository. Okay? So, for example, the bolt, I think it's for every week. Yeah, right. Here. Per week, right? By default, yes. So you can see who's uh, participating in that repository, who's actually working on it. Okay? There's the pulse, distributors. You can see all their activity at a glance. Okay? So, GitHub assumes that. You have a group of people working on the, on the, on the process, right? So it, it gives you different tools to keep track of all of that, okay? So you guys can go through here and see what you need and what you don't need. But most of the time, you might not need any of this, right? How many of you guys have actually checked this before? One person, hmm. we'll talk about it later. Uh, post frequency, I, I've used that one before. I've used this one when I want to see if I'm doing most of the work at work, and so I can complain about it. Um, you guys think I'm playing? No, for sure, I, I do. Um, yeah. Let's see. Um, is there anything specific you guys want to see here? I feel like this is just analytics. I don't know if any of you guys have any of Is there a way for it to access like all the uh, members' uh, emails on this or usernames? Usernames, yes. You can see a list <coughs> of collaborators, right? So here. So I never want to like get included in that. There. So before we go there, I click on port. And you can see everyone that ports your repository, right? So let's see what this stuff is. You go to settings, you can click on collaborators. And you can see all the collaborators you have on your repository. That's what you were asking, right? Uh, yeah, one more time from the top. I yeah, one. so you go to uh, settings, go to all of the top. You can look up the screen. Right there, settings. Oh, I see. Click the last one from the main screen. Are you in there? Yeah, you're not a collaborator on this project. You're not a collaborator on this What's your, uh, here, good job, stop right Otherwise, there. settings is There's good. no settings after it, but. Okay, so you're not a collaborator. Here, what's your, uh, GitHub user? SJT1988. Who are you watching? SJT1988. SJT1988. There we go. Okay. Link is, so right there. Add collaborator. Okay, and by default, it gives you right access. Do you see it now? How long does it take to propagate? Why don't you just do a separate demo for a second? Oh. Okay. It should show it on the uh, repository, the, the code tab. At the top, it should say, like, next left. 
or you can do it just hanging on. So.
follow IESB. Okay? No option. When I'm at the home page of the IESB profile, there's no option to follow that. I think it might be because it's an organization rather than a user. Yeah, right. I can star the repository. Right. But I can't just follow all the repositories. Yeah, I think because it's an organization. But you should be part of the organization already. Right? Are you part of it? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just send me your, your username and we can add you there. Yeah, I just noticed that some of our images on the home page are actually really star on that and then taken. So that's a good chance for you to open an issue. Well, Tony so already did that, but I haven't really seen that. He yeah, opened an issue for us? Yeah. Is anyone assigned to it? If you just brought it up, I don't, I don't think anyone is, but I'm okay. guessing that we got like four or twenty of performance. You might have opened it, I don't think it's pretty much anything. We were all looking at it. Um, I started writing some examples to get the file for that. I thought it was easy because I had to check. So I'm actually going to look at it now. I'm right clicking and saving images, and like one of them is the CMD. And the rest now, did, did he open a specific issue just for images? No. He, he said he was on. He suggested to check the image. Okay. But so you know, if we have different layers in the in the file sheet, for instance, then it's open to them. Right. If uh, if the images themselves have So in this case, it's the perfect example where you can go in, create an issue, and say optimize all images, and then assign to yourself, or you can leave it up to someone else, right? That's for everyone. So. Okay, okay, followers. You can follow users. You guys know that word, right? And then you can see who that person is following. But I mean, these are pretty straightforward. It, it almost feels like social media, right? Now projects, once you have your uh, project uh, set up and you're managing projects, they'll show up here. Okay? So what else? Unfollow, we should unfollow me. Okay. Any questions about the profile? Okay. And this section right here, uh, I believe it's still limited to six, but you can choose to, uh, which six repositories you want to show. I think uh, if you are applying to companies, it would make a lot of sense to put what is most relevant to that position that you're applying for, right? Especially the company that you're applying for has an open repository. Make sure that they're your chunk. Especially if you contribute to them. So customize your pin. So I have five. Yeah, so you can use up to six, right? Any questions about that? Way too loud. Okay. Again, we went over the activity <coughs> component here. Um, okay. So this section right here, these are all contributions that the user has done, right? So it kind of tells you what you do the most of. It almost <coughs> feels like a personality graph over here, right? So you can see that a lot of his work is in between commits and pull requests. Right? <coughs> okay. This next section is exactly what it says. Just the next, uh, a list of all the activity that, that he's done. Okay. What he's contributed to different repositories. So I believe it does this by uh, section. So I think it's either by week or individual day. No, it's right here. Questions about the GitHub profile? Now, one thing I, I do want you guys to do is um, let's find a repository. Can you guys give me a name of a big company? Not all of you guys at once. I can't Google. Google. 
было смотреть по этому. Because you started it from Jonathan's page. Yeah. Oh, okay. Searches whatever page you're looking at oh, first. I had many part of the back then. So. Okay. I didn't know, I wasn't aware that it automatically put that in if that was. So I'm trying to find. Will it automatically show up on your GitHub? Like, 
Yeah. You mean when when can you get like a, a badge or something yeah. on your Yeah, or something. Something that you So it's a bit different. So <coughs> let me look uh
it's our first one. Moving forward, it, it might be that way, all right? Uh, how many of you guys have attended a hackathon before? Hackathons, anyone? Okay, perfect. This is the whole purpose of hacking, right? I feel that it's, it's less um, intimidating to do four hours with people that you probably already know than go in for three days or whatever to an actual hackathon, right? You get some practice here, two, three months, and then next thing you know, you end up in a hackathon, right? So the whole purpose of, of these hack days are for you guys to get experience working with people on a project on GitHub, right, using Git, uh, working with a team, presenting. Once you're done with the project and it's time to present, you guys, you know, have to defend your project, tell them why <coughs> it's the best one, right? It's a skill that you might think is not useful, but when you get into the workforce, you need to sell your skills, right? I know some of you guys might not like talking, but trust me, if you guys get good at it, you'll move up much faster. Why? Because you can voice what you want, right? You guys, yeah. you agree, right? Yeah. That in GitHub? Yeah, it's under the branch, August 2019. There's only two branches there right now, master and August oh. 2019. Oh, you got one branch called hack. Oh, I'm from a Okay. is Okay, cool. So I, cause I, because I forked it and I was just wondering why it wasn't showing up, I wasn't aware that it was being called. Yeah, I'm not finding the thing. Do I have to go to the name? Go to ISD. Okay. So, yeah. any questions about hack day? So, apart from uh, presenting, uh, there will be a panel of three uh, judges, right? So they see the uh, application, they'll look at your code, they'll review the code. Uh, okay. uh, they'll review I, the code, my question. That was the my quality question. of your presentation, <laughs> how you guys do when you present your, your, your project. Two hours ago, uh, they as far as what do you need to create a team, remember, you can use a project manager, a graphic designer, a front-end developer, back-end developer, uh, I believe we limited, <coughs> was it a soft limit payment of uh, five to seven people per, per team? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, again, check meetup.com, the rules are there. Um, we'll keep marketing every week as well, so you guys will get a chance to look at, at, at the rules. But we want to push you guys to add more than just developers to your team. Uh, if you have a friend who's a graphic designer, Maybe they, they don't want to come to the, uh, to the actual meetings, uh, meetings of ISD, but maybe they do want to per participate in Hack Day, right? And they're a graphic designer. Bring them, right? Think about the presentation of that application, the way you can do it. You're a programmer, right? Maybe you don't have graphic design skills, but if your project looks better, you benefit off of that, right? Do you guys agree with that? Okay, so if you have a graphic designer friend, bring them. Very useful. Tell them to make the app look pretty. So, uh, <coughs> project manager, one day, they'll keep you on, on top, right? They'll be able to prioritize any features that you might want to add. Maybe you don't need a feature, and you can work on, on the other features that are more important and vital for your project, okay? Any questions about Hack Day? How many of you guys are gonna participate in Hack Day? I'm gonna imagine everyone just raised their hands. <laughs> so, wonderful. No, I'll be there. Okay, perfect. So, <laughs> right? That's what I'm thinking. Dude, kind of um, I don't, I don't want to win. I want to learn. <laughs> yeah. So eventually, prizes will get better. Uh, for this round, you guys do get ISD t-shirts. <coughs> uh, once you win, well, like, once I know who the winners are, obviously I get prizes and I and I get them right. And um, fingers crossed, our side is up already by then. Uh, we also want to spotlight the uh, the team that wins, right? Right now, it might not seem like that's a lot, but think about this. We're going to be, um, we have a partnership already with UCR. Um, we're still working with uh, solidifying the one with, with Esri. But imagine when people and developers at UCR, Esri, and other companies start looking at our site, and they're able to see you as a team that you actually participated in a community event, that has weight, right? You can add that as part of your uh, resume or your repertoire as a, as a developer, right? It gives you an edge over someone that doesn't, they just stay home and they learn at home and they have no product, right? <coughs> Anything you can do to set yourself apart from the competition, <coughs> do it, right? 
Do you guys agree with that? Or? Okay, perfect. Wonderful. I saw a lot of faces do this. <laughs> Great. We're, we're, we're getting this. Okay? Um, any questions about hack day? It can be anything. How do you spell hack day? Okay? Any questions? Yeah. Uh, so you have two JavaScript files right here. So, uh, so okay. So those two files are just for you to like look at them, kind of get an idea of what's going to happen that day. Mm -hmm. But this is not going to be the exact code you get that day. Oh, perfect. Right. You're still missing files. Okay. So, are we good? Okay, I'm asked for the end. Are we good? Yes, yes. perfect. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So, again, if you guys have any questions, please let me know on Slack. Uh, if you have anything uh, to do with uh, GitHub and you're stuck, let me know. Uh, I'll go over there in a minute. Uh, otherwise, thank you for coming, guys. Uh, we're trying to bring technology to, to the you know, IE, and you guys showing up, that helps a lot. Okay? Thank you. Thank you.